Hello, everybody. Welcome to the show. Hope you're all doing well. I uh, haven't made a video on this channel in a little while, so I wanted to pop in, say hello, uh, tell you guys what's going to be happening around the channel uh, over the coming year in terms of a grow journal. And I also wanted to talk about putting your plants outdoors early on in the season. Uh, because that's what's kind of been popping up a lot on my feed right now because it's that time of the year. Otherwise, I've just been hanging around, uh, taking it easy, sometimes fighting YouTube in terms of uh, issuing me endless strikes and whatnot. Just recently, I couldn't post on the uh, YouTube variant of this channel again because they struck my singular video uh, on the topic of psilocybin that I had up. So... I don't know, it's ridiculous, but thankfully the episode continues to exist elsewhere, so we soldier on. So first let's talk about putting your plants outdoors uh, early in the season. So this is kind of the time of the year whenever in my analytics I notice a huge pop in my germination how-tos and the initial setup uh, for seedlings how-tos, so I know that you guys are thinking about it. And uh, everybody is always thinking, well, when do I put my plants outside? Uh, when is it time? How early can I start them indoors? And uh, what I always tell people is, if you have the ability to control the light cycle indoors, start the plants as early as you possibly can. Don't wait until conditions outside are becoming close to ideal temperature-wise or something, because you could get a lot done uh, in terms of plant growth with just a couple of extra weeks of vegetative phase indoors in a setup that can be done for as cheap as 50 or 60 dollars. Your plants will end up gaining enormous size during the vegetative phase and in the long run end up having a longer vegetative phase grow to be way way bigger and yield a whole lot more than you might be anticipating if you go about things that way. In fact the only real concern about uh, putting your plants outside too early is uh, accidentally causing them to go into flowering because you put them out uh, during the part when the days are still too short and then you stress them out because for a while they go back into flowering and then go back out of flowering. The best way to prevent your plants from flowering prematurely is to wait to bring them outside until just after the spring equinox, which is roughly March in the northern hemisphere and September in the southern hemisphere. But certainly the light hours are the most important aspect in terms of when to bring your plants outside. As I showed you guys in a relatively recent video as far as what cannabis plants can handle in terms of cold nighttime temperatures, they can actually handle surprisingly a lot. You could be well below the quote-unquote ideal temperatures and still have your plants be chugging on. So there you go, that's my two cents as far as maximizing what you can get uh, out of your soon-to-be outdoor plants. Now the other thing I wanted to do is talk about the uh, grow journal that we're going to be doing this year and I've decided that this is going to be a versus type of grow journal of, of one light versus another light. And normally uh, what I do is I have like a little grow journal tent, but I'm not going to be using it uh, this year, uh, partially because I have a lot to do. I'm selling my house, I'm moving, but we're going to be taking the journal to a whole other location and we're going to be doing our biggest journal yet. It's going to be happening in a five by roughly 12 foot space. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the newest fanless G8 their biggest flagship model that just came out, which is the C3, and we're going to watch it compete against their predecessor flagship, which is the G8900 veg slash flower model, which I've actually reviewed on the show a number of years ago. And we're also going to combine that old model with two of those 80 watt G8 flowering boosters in order to make the comparison between the lights more fair to even out their power draw. Now the C3 is actually incredibly similar to the last couple lights I've had on the show in terms of its bar style type of construction. But what makes this one pretty crazy is the price point. It's at about 1200 US dollars and I'll link to it in the description uh, if you want to take a look at the specs. Obviously G8 were kind enough to provide all of the equipment for this demonstration uh, grow journal so a big thanks to them. Now 
$1,200, that's a good 300 bucks or more above the price of similar lights. Uh, but unlike similar lights I've had on, this one also adds UV and infrared into the mix for a more robust spectrum. It's a very, very well-built light that weighs like almost 40 pounds. And the main selling feature of this thing really does appear to be sort of the sturdiness of the construction. As far as the PPFD that this light puts out, G8 has never been known for particularly high PPFD. Here's a couple of the uh, PAR maps for the light at different heights. And as you can see, these numbers are quite good but there's certainly nothing crazy now the g8 c3 draws 680 watts of power and the g8 uh 900 draws 540 watts and each uh flowering booster draws another 80 watts so 700 watts versus 680 uh that's going to be a good comparison Obviously, because the uh, C3 LED is a fanless and those are at a little bit of a different intensity, you've got to hang them closer uh, than you hang the G8. Those who uh, have looked at my lighting episodes in the past carefully are well aware of that. And don't worry, we will be doing it in this grow journal. The strain we're going to be growing is going to be Mimosa Evo by Barney's Farm. And since, as I said, I'm going to be selling my house and moving and whatnot, I'll just be checking in on this grow grow on a regular basis. Day-to-day -day operations are going to be handled by my buddy Chris and uh, a link to his Instagram down in the video description if you guys want to follow along uh, maybe with some of the behind the scenes stuff of this journal. As a result of a different grower being involved beyond just myself, the growing medium is going to be quite different than what we've done in the past. We're going to be actually doing a mix that's, uh, I believe, 60% hydroton and about 40% cocoa. So there you go, cocoa people. Now you can never say that I didn't have a grow journal with cocoa uh, that was on the show. So that's going to be interesting. So we're going to have Mimosa Evo on each side one under the G8 and the boosters, one under the C3, uh, and we'll see what's going to outperform new lion versus old lion. So uh, join us for that. Subscribe uh, if you haven't already done so. Hit that like button if this was useful, uh, and we'll see you guys uh, pretty soon as this grow journal rolls out.